Today's episode is sponsored by Globally Paid. Globally Paid is a service that integrates payment acceptance into any software to help businesses scale faster and without friction. Globally Paid handles credit card processing, fraud protection, payouts, dispute alerts, and chargeback management. And Globally Paid is all about great relationships, global payments, custom tech, everything begins and flows with compliance. For more information, visit globallypaid.com. Hello, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Tony Shap Show. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I have a special guest on the show. His name is Tyler. Not only is he a special guest, but he's a personal friend of mine. You know, we all have those friends that you could go a couple of years or 18 months or 12 months, you could, you know, not talk. And then you pick up the phone and you connect with them. You pick up right where you left off. And Tyler is dear to my heart. He's a close friend of mine. And, and that's the kind of friend he is to me. So I want to give you a big warm welcome from me and the audience. Tyler, say hello to everyone listening. Thanks, Tony. Really appreciate you having me on the show. It's great. Thank you. Welcome to the show. So as you know, the theme of the show, I have a rapid, you know, top 10 with Tony. And I just go into quick 10 questions. Um, you know, I go, go right into it. So if you're ready, we'll dive right into question number one. I'm ready. Awesome. All right. So the first question I'd like to open up with is my famous question. What's a one word open that you could describe to, to share with us how you're feeling right now, Tyler? Optimistic. Awesome. Perfect. We all need that going into 2021 as we're finishing 2020. <laughs> yeah. That's partly good. why, right? That's probably why that's that's the word that comes to mind. Is one, I am optimistic, but we all need a little more optimism uh, going into this coming year for sure. Absolutely. So tell us about your business. Tell I know exactly what you do and I know your capability, but for the audience who's listening, for the business leaders, CEOs, founders, investors that are listening, please share with them you know, who you are, what you do, and how you got started, where you are today, and where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my company is Box Out Marketing. Uh, we started out as a full service marketing agency focused on uh, small businesses who use a marketing automation platform called Infusionsoft. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, the company is rebranded, it's now called Keep, but uh, that's uh, where we have focused for the last eight years. Uh, we continue to focus there, but we've made a shift about a year ago. Um, where we're less of a full service agency and more of a really focused uh, implementation team. And we can talk about that more uh, later. But, um, but yeah, I started out in 2007, actually working at Infusionsoft uh, on the marketing team, eventually became the VP of marketing, was uh, at that company for about five years, left in 2012 to do my own thing. And uh, shortly thereafter, started Box Out. Uh, and uh, now we've got a, a a rapidly growing team and exciting opportunity. And uh, we're just, like I said, really optimistic about the future. Awesome. Share with us your a recent win. So what is a recent W I would call it that you've put on the board that's close and dear to your heart and business context. And Tyler, what did you learn from that? Yeah. Biggest thing recently, um, you know, since you and I talked last is the shift that I just mentioned, uh, we moved away from being a full service agency to more of just an implementation team. And uh, we've, uh, more, more than that, we've also built uh, an online platform that makes it more self-service. So our, our service is no longer typical agency work where you, you bid on a project, people pay for the project, or even, you know, typical retainer work where people pay a monthly retainer, you do work, etc. We've uh, flipped to a model now where it's a, a low flat fee every month. You log into the platform and you submit requests for implementation. So you might need a webinar funnel built or a, um, you know, some kind of fulfillment campaign or something like that. You submit requests uh, specifically for what you need done, and then our team executes on it. And uh, it, it's been great. We started that in November of last year, so just barely over a year ago. Uh, we have uh, replaced and surpassed um, all of our previous uh, revenue. And, uh, and the growth trajectory is, is much greater than it was before. And the company is more profitable uh, with this new service. So 
Uh, it's interesting because we always position ourselves as more of a high-end agency where we charge for all the strategy and the copy and you know all the things that, that we're great at. I avoided really focusing on implementation because those things tend to uh, be more commoditized and you're more kind of battling for the, um, you know, the, the dollars per hour uh, rates, you know, hey, we're $15 an hour. Well, someone else is $12 per hour. You know, you're kind of fighting that, um, that battle. But uh, the way we've shifted to this, um, to this platform, you know, self-service based service uh, ha has really made a huge difference. Uh, and it's really exciting for us and our customers. I feel like our customers are getting more value for their money uh, by a long shot. And uh, like I said, the, the company's more profitable. So it's exciting. That is beautiful. Uh, that's that's a complete different shift, but in a good good way. Because I know, yeah. um, and audience, as you're listening, Tyler is very modest and he's very humbled. He's responsible for millions, hundreds of millions of dollars that he's helped his clients achieve, and you know, in top line numbers because of his implementation and his funnels that he builds. Because no one else does it better than you, Tyler. And I'm here to tell you that uh, I know you're very humble, and uh, which is great, but. I don't know anyone else that has your level of capability uh, in what you do. So well, thank, just want to put that out there. That. Of course. Yeah. Let's talk about failures, unfortunately. So uh, what's a failure that, that you recently had and what did you learn from it, Tyler? Look, I, I might look at failure a little bit differently than, than most people. I actually really, uh, really get excited about <laughs> failures. Uh, I, I tell our team all the time, particularly new uh, team members, we don't call them employees, uh, but team members, um, when they're new, I tell them, look, I, I want you to fail. I want you to screw up. <laughs> um, not that we want to mess up, but I don't want people to be hesitant to do things. I don't want people sitting around like you do in a, you know, maybe in a, a government business or government agency, you know, waiting for someone to tell you exactly what you can and can't do. Uh, I want our team members to be entrepreneurial. I want them to be thinking creatively. I want them to be not uh, held back at all by any fears of, of anything. Um, and so we actually celebrate uh, failures a lot. You know, if someone screws something up, you know, I'll go give them a big high five. I mean, like, awesome. Great job for trying that. Uh, it didn't work, but hey, now we learned something. Uh, and, and next time that won't happen again. Um, so I actually get excited about um, our team experiencing failure uh, because it, it propels us forward. Um, but to answer your, your question uh, a little more specifically, um, in some ways I, I see the previous agency model as kind of a big failure. Uh, something that I didn't understand going into it was that in our particular market, that business is not scalable. It's very profitable and very exciting at a certain level. Uh, but we kept running into this, uh, you know, inhibitor of our growth, which was as you start to grow and you build teams and you hire managers over those teams, leaders over those teams, and then you get to kind of the next level where you need leaders of leaders uh, in our particular space. Now, if we were serving, you know, mid-sized businesses, enterprise, enterprise businesses, we could scale, you know, much, much further because we can charge four or five, 10 times more than what we charge for small businesses. But small businesses have a smaller budgets, uh, therefore there isn't as much money in it. And so once you start scaling uh, to that point, um, it actually just doesn't work. Uh, the, the economics of the business don't work. Uh, you actually start running negative. Uh, profits go go away and uh, the business starts losing money. And um, you know, for, for a few years, we, we grew and kind of ran into that barrier and you know, I wasn't a smart enough CEO to, to realize what was happening for quite some time. Uh, finally, I realized like this doesn't work. It, you know, no matter how we structure it, no matter how we do it, um, if we keep the business small and only service a number of a certain number of customers, then um, then it does work. But I I had aspirations to help a lot more people. So um, so that was essentially a, a failure in the business model and in my leadership and not understanding exactly what was happening for quite some time. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I feel like we've overcome that by shifting the model and changing things up a bit. It's really nice that you were able to, you know, catch, catch that and then just kind of find a, res you know, a solution, right? Like a lot of other leaders talk about on here, on here to go, it's not a, it's not a failure, um, you know, it's, it's how you, you know, it's how you come up with a solution, right? It's not like sure. right or wrong. It's like, 
but that's great that you did that. You were able to shift and keep up with change. And I'm glad you're, you're having new success, success as well. So, uh, so let's talk about expenses. So let's, um, let's go into what is your biggest business expense as of today? Yeah, by far, uh, nothing, nothing comes close to payroll. Uh, you know, we have a, a growing team. Um, you know, what do we have now? 12, 13 people we're hiring our 13th right now, actually 13 and 14 <laughs> uh, we're hiring right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's no other expense that comes even close to that. Got it. And I have to, of course, I have to ask this because I'm in payments. Um, you know, I want to know from you, where does payment processing fit in the top 10 expenses for you? It's a good question. I haven't looked at that specifically, but it's probably in the top five. Um, yeah, I mean, we got payroll and then we got our marketing advertising expenses, which is probably the next biggest expense. Uh, and we got office rent and payments is probably right after that, it's right in there. Uh, as we're growing, maybe it's maybe it has surpassed that already. It. let's talk about your favorite online business tool what is that for you today that you like what's that one business tool that you use every single day tyler that you couldn't live without yeah i mean that one that one's kind of a no-brainer but it's uh, it's infusionsoft or keep uh infusionsoft is just an amazing tool uh to automate sales marketing uh fulfillment you know, really any communication to your customers or to your leads uh, even internal tasks and and communications uh, it's just a, an amazing tool. I've been, like I said, I've been using it since 2007. Um, it continues to, uh, you know, continues to grow. They continue to develop it and, and further its capabilities. Um, but even in areas where they're not furthering the capabilities, it seems like there's always a new application, a new way we can leverage this amazing software to, to just be more efficient as a company. Um, so I, I, I just, I know we couldn't do half of what we do without Infusionsoft. And a lot of others that you help as well. I know that there's people that you've helped, they would have no means being, you know, the kind of numbers that would pull in. I've seen it, right? The numbers are pulling in and it's all because of you, because of the way you've developed everything. So I know a lot of people's success really depend on you. Um, and and I'm sure they know you're, you're, you're super valuable to them. So let's talk about your best resources for acquiring new high value clients. What's your best resource for that today? I know it's different times, everyone's changed, but what is that for you now, Tyler? How, how we acquire clients, is that what you're asking? New high value clients, yeah, the big, the ones that you consider high value. Okay, um, well, like I said, with our model shift, uh, we're not focused as much on high value clients. We're focused on serving the masses. And so every client's a, a high value client. They all pay the same rate. It's just this flat monthly fee. Um, and, uh, so the, the way we acquire clients really though, is, um, it starts with content. It starts with us, uh, putting content out into the community, into the Infusionsoft community, uh, teaching, guiding, leading the way. Um, it's, it's leadership and content. That's what it is. Uh, so we, we do a lot of things to, to try and lead the community in, in a positive direction. Uh, small businesses are getting beat up right now, um, you know, because of COVID and everything. So, We've put a lot of effort into supporting businesses through that, uh, helping them know how to shift, how to pivot, how to adjust things to keep their business going. Uh, back in March, when the first shutdown happened, we started what we called the Small Business Lifeline. Uh, every day, every business day, we got online on a basically on a Zoom call, uh, open call to support any small business that wanted to get on and ask questions and needed help. And uh, we did that for weeks uh, and then and then we turned it off and now we've got some other ways that we're helping people. But really it's leading, leading in the community and helping people the best way we can uh, and then putting out content to teach and guide and lead that way. Uh, and, you know, we do some advertising and, and things like that. Uh, you know, get on podcasts and speak at live events when we have, when those are <laughs> possible. Um, but really uh, I think our, our leadership and our content in the community is what's most valuable. People see that, they, they, they value the content, uh, they end up on our list, we nurture that relationship, 
And uh, eventually when they're a good fit, they become customers. I, I know you always lead with value. And one thing I've known about you for all these years that you always start with value. Anyone that I've connected with you or anyone that I've, uh, you know, we have mutual friends that we talk to or, or your clients, you know, you always have value to offer, which is really great from this place that you come from um, because a lot of people don't do that and it speaks to your success. So now um, going on to the next question, um, I know you go out there and you, you do keynotes, um, you, 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 you host your own uh, conferences, um, you know, pre-COVID it was face-to-face, now it's on Zoom. I, I know you do webinars and, and all these other things that people come to you and they're always asking you, you know, when there's a Q&A part. So I wanted to ask you, what is that one question that you wish people would ask you and they never ask you in business context that you, you wish they, would, you know, they could find out more about who you are in business context? Yeah, the questions that I wish people would ask more would be a little higher level strategic questions about their business. As small business owners, here's the the trap I think we all fall into, uh, but we we tend to get uh, desperate at times uh, because running a small business is a struggle no matter who you are. And so in those times of desperation, we go looking for solutions. And when we look for solutions, we end up seeing ads and promotions and things like that for uh, solutions that tend to be very, very focused. So for example, you might see something online that says, this one webinar funnel, you know, sell, sell anything with this one webinar funnel, right? And, and that's not an exaggeration. That's like a real ad that you, you'll see out there. And so you see that and then you click on it and you go and you read the sales letter and there's all kinds of testimonials and it looks amazing. You're like, oh, that thing's gonna solve all my problems. And uh, like I said, we all do this. We all fall into the trap because guess what? Even though everyone tells us, hey, I'm not looking for the silver bullet, uh, we are. (laughs) We all would really like things to be a little bit easier. We really would like that silver bullet. And so subconsciously, we're we're seeking that thing that's going to make it a lot easier for us. And when there's something out there that promises that, uh, we tend to get really focused. We get we get this tunnel vision. We're like, ooh, if I just build this webinar and I do it the, exactly the way they say, and uh, I get that launch, it's going to solve all my problems. But the higher level questions that we need to be asking are more about the economics of the business. Like I shared about our business, you know, not being able to scale beyond a certain point because the economics just don't work. Um, what about our industry? Is the industry actually a growing industry, something we should really be focused on, or is it a dying industry? Things are shifting so fast right now. We end up talking to a lot of businesses that are in in dying industries and they're they're fighting and clawing their way. And it's like, you know what? Let's make a shift and get you into an industry that's growing because eventually this industry is gonna die. Um, you know, the the high level strategy for marketing and sales, uh, oftentimes, you know, people get sucked into these these online things like the webinar strategy or whatever. And they, they realize that or they don't realize that that strategy doesn't work for their business model. So we call that business model and conversion model match. Uh, those things need to match. And and uh, again, it's when, when you're a lawyer or a landscaper or whatever, marketing is not your expertise. Your expertise is in your field. And so it's easy to get tricked into, or maybe you just, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, you haven't spent the time studying and learning marketing. And so you, you believe these things are going to work. And in reality, they don't. They're for a different kind of business model. And so we want to make sure that the conversion model and the business model are actually a match. Um, So those are the types of high level questions that people miss because they're often too focused on, you know, the the little tactical thing that they think is going to solve all their problems today. Uh, So I wish people would focus more at that level because once you get high level strategy nailed down and the business model is right and the industry is a growing industry and you know all those things are lined up uh, the, the company gets more profitable as you scale uh, if all of those things happen then uh, business gets a lot easier a lot less stressful and a lot more fun truthfully so true and what you said was very powerful and thank you for sharing that with me in the audience, I think that's a great takeaway that we learn in addition to all the other ones that you shared with us. So Tyler, tell us how our listeners get a hold of you. And yeah, the easiest way is just to go to boxoutmarketing.com. Uh, if you are a small business and you're interested in you know, automating your sales and marketing and fulfillment and things like that, and you're, you're a growth minded entrepreneur, uh, we can talk to you about Infusionsoft if you don't have it already. Uh, if you already have it, then we'd love to talk to you about how we can help support you and help you get more value out of 
that amazing software. Uh, but yeah, boxoutmarketing.com is is where you can find us, learn about our services, uh, inquire more. Um, you know, we're on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash box out marketing, probably I'm assuming, <laughs> uh, but you can search us there. Uh, but yeah, that's the easiest way. Great. So for those of you driving, I'll put that in the show notes. You could pull over later or later on, you can find it in the show notes as well. So thank you very much. Here we are at the end. Sadly, uh, we're going to close it with a one word close. So what's that one word that you could use to describe how you're feeling now? So again, I'm going to go back to how we started, but the way I'm feeling is is optimistic. Uh, that's the word I want to leave everyone with is to to have optimism. Um, it like I said, uh, small businesses are are getting beat up right now, uh, but there's uh, no reason uh, to not be optimistic about the future. I think there's a lot of great things uh, happening. It might require some shifting of your business. It might be might require getting into an entirely different business, uh, but there's great opportunity out there. Uh, there's a lot of great people available to help you tap into that opportunity. And uh, I think we all should just be optimistic about the future. Awesome. Tyler, thank you so much for your time. I'm very grateful for you to come on the show and share your knowledge with us. And now people know exactly who you are a little bit better than before if they didn't know you. But now, now that they got a chance to know you, they could connect with you by going to your website. I'm super excited for people to be able to, you know, hopefully work, work with you and to see how you could help them because I know there's a lot of businesses over the years you've helped and there's a lot more you could certainly help with your new model. So I'm very excited to have you and, and I'm super honored. So thanks again. And I can't wait to have you on here again. No problem. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Tyler. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed it and great to have you. And thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. Till next time, onwards and upwards. <laughs>